Bodies lay on the floor as if Bill Cosby got to their drinks before them. But that doesn't seem to be the case since this is evident of an epic battle that took place. A dragon soon appears from the thick smoke and stands before six survivors. He begins the dialogue with a roast by calling them foolish disgusting humans who are deluded if they think mere mortals like them can defeat a dragon such as himself. But before all of this occurred, there was a calamity known as the Shadow Worlds that slowly overtook the world in black fog, and amongst all the disaster humanity has faced, this calamity is said to have been the worst. Though the fog hasn't consumed the entirety of the planet, the parts it has engulfed cannot be inhabited by any living creature, and as a result, no one knows exactly what goes on inside the dense smog. Once the fog claims everything the world will cease to exist, Therefore the heroes must find a way of conquering the Shadow Worlds if they are to save humanity. Desser aggravates the dragon whom we have come to know is called Boromir Napolitan. The hero proclaims that he will slay the dragon and bring an end to the disaster that has been upon his world. Napolitan accepts his challenge with a loud cry and brings from within his chest an attack that concentrates at the tip of his mouth as a fireball. He then shoots it at the six hoping to finish them all in one move. One of the heroes stands with his shield ready to block but the fireball dissolves all thanks to the help of Desser's magic. Napolitan cannot believe a human was able to cancel out his attack, so he steps back and charges what seems to be an even more powerful spell. But Desser activates his magic again in an attempt to stop the dragon. He is successful in snuffing out the fireball but not without tremendous effort. His party move forward to finish the dragon off once Desser announces to them that his analysis of the magical pattern is complete and that he has sealed every draconian spell. Even after witnessing the incredible feats of the humans, Napolitan still looks down on them and holds firm to his belief that he cannot be defeated by such a weak species. He swings his tail towards the oncoming trio, but Raffello puts up a barrier that is able to withstand the force of the tail whip. The other two take flight when the brute with fire in his eyes launches a long-range assault that stunts the dragon. This allows Azes to imbue her sword with magic ready to slay the dragon. Napolitan tries to retaliate, but the mage steps in with a side blast and then casts a spell that gives Azest all their magic powers. With that immense energy and one swing of her sword, the dragon is defeated which lifts the fog. The party stands there grateful that their battle has finally come to an end. When evening comes, they sit around to celebrate their victory. The brute wonders if they have defeated the wrong target. Raffello wonders the same too since by now, they should have been sent to their world after defeating their assigned target. The mage assures them that they did indeed take out their intended enemy. We learn that these six are the sole survivors out of 150 million people who fought against Napolitan. His statement triggers Desser to have a flashback of all the companions he has lost along the way, including friends he deems irreplaceable. He concludes that this hellscape has taken too much from them, the priestess can see the mood is dull and reminds them that they have defeated Napolitan so they should think about something uplifting. The reality is that 99% of the mages have passed away, they need to figure out what's to come next. The priestess feels like they should pray first, she begins by commending Raffello for being able to block Napolitan's attacks. But he gives most of the credit to Desser who contributed more to their victory. The other members of the party agree with that statement, the leader confesses that he didn't think that Desser could withstand the fight. He is impressed that he managed to analyze and seal Napolitan's draconian spells with his circle, not even he has such power. The party leader is surprised that Desser is unknown despite having so much strength, they are all curious to know why. He reveals that he's a commoner, their leader finds this to be unfortunate and states that he would have given any support he needed if Desser was at the Magic Tower. Raffello wants to know what everyone will do once they get back to their world, they all share their plans. Desser is the last to speak, the thought of him returning to the Henrian Academy causes him to think about Romantica his most cherished person who passed away during this fight. He just tells them that he will think about what to do next for a while before acting. Their feel-good conversation takes a left turn when Napolitan's eyes open. The amount of magic emanating from the dragon makes them doubt if they defeated him, the mage leader is certain that they have. He thinks hard and remembers a key detail about a dragon's heart, according to sources the creature's hearts don't only pump blood, but they also store and circulate vast amounts of mana. When a dragon dies the blood stops, and if the stored mana has nowhere to go, an explosion follows. This is the first time in history that humans have defeated a dragon, so this could not be confirmed. The mage sets up a barrier to brace for this colossal explosion. Due to Napolitan's extraordinary magic power, they don't stand a chance of stopping it. Desser tries to do something, but his magic circle is instantly broken, the party leader tells them all to prepare for the end. The white light engulfs them all, 
Desser can't believe that this is the end and begins to shout. He opens his eyes surprised to be still alive. His gaze then hits his reflection prompting a look of shock to be written all over his face. Desser is completely baffled as to what is going on but his attention is drawn by the sound of applause. His curiosity leads him to an atrium where he walks in on Professor Bridget giving her welcome speech to the new students of Hebrean Academy. Some of the female students talk among themselves regarding her beauty but she politely scolds them for their chit chat. She informs the cohort that not everyone will be able to enroll, they must all take a test and only the top 600 will be accepted. Simultaneously with Professor Bridget, Desser says that the test is for them to clear a shadow world. The students complain among themselves as they find this task to be dangerous and impossible. Bridget assures them it is artificially created for the parameters of the test. She informs them that they will be fully briefed by their seniors who will support them in the process. With that explanation, the professor officially begins the entrance exam for the year 3613. The situation begins to dawn on Desser who leaves the assembly before everyone else. He finds a corner and hyperventilates as he tries to make sense of the situation. The battle against Napolitan started in 3616 and they fought in that dungeon for 10 years. Everything was destroyed in the process. He thinks about all the pain and suffering they went through and wonders what it was all for as he finds himself back to a time before all of it happened. Desser falls to the ground crying as the pain is too much. He later heads out as it dawns on him that this is not a dream and he's in the past. His thoughts are interrupted when Ladoria shouts that she has been looking for him when she couldn't find him at the directed meeting spot. Desser apologizes. She accepts it and formally introduces herself to him. Ladoria is a second year student who will be his mentor moving forward. The two exchange greetings and Desser remembers that she is a mage genius who wields fire magic. She is number one in the academy rankings. She notices the absent look on his face and he explains it as nerves. She tells him not to be nervous about the exams as the point of it is just to see if the students can fight. Ladoria looks through his profile and notices that he's a commoner. This means that he will be in B class even if he passes. Desser is already aware of the school's discriminatory practice. It puts the nobles into the alpha class and commoners into the beta class. Proper education is not given to the commoner even if they show talent. This system has crushed the prospects of many mages. Ladoria leads him to the school, and she is surprised that he is not awestricken by the area. Desser simply tells her that he has seen a similar building before. Ladoria doesn't believe that because there's no facility this grand anywhere, she informs him that they must be quick otherwise they will be late. As the duo proceeds through the corridors, a call from behind catches their attention. Ladoria cringes as she recognizes the voice. A guy with blue hair is sarcastically surprised to see her in this area. Desser acts ignorant as he asks to know who this character is. She introduces him as the annoying jerk Elhim. Desser recalls that he's a mage who wields water magic and he doesn't get along with Ladoria. He continues his oblivious act asking his mentor if she doesn't like the guy judging on her response to him. She comments that dislike is a mild way of putting it because she hates the guy. Elhim smugly crosses his hands as he remarks on how long it took her to get to the facility and attributes her lack of speed to her height. Ladoria calls him aggravating and states that his speech reveals his crude upbringing. Elhim retaliates saying that he expects nothing less from a despicable fire mage like her. They both try to hide their irritation with a fake smile as Ladoria points out that he lost to her. Elhim reveals that he let her win. She gives him the benefit of the doubt on that one because his his display of power was so abysmal. Elhim pauses the petty insult battle and turns his attention to Desser asking if Ladoria is his mentor. He politely confirms this and Elhim is appreciative of Desser's manners. He asks for Desser's name which he gives. The blue-haired guy checks his profile and begins to laugh because Desser is a commoner. He teases Ladoria and doesn't even see them as competition at all. She wants to know what he means by that. Elhim dismisses her question and just states that he's looking forward to the test. He walks past them laughing at the situation, but he stops just behind Desser and tells him that he will be in beta class even if he passes the test with flying colors. Elhim advises him not to take the test, and Ladoria shouts at him wanting to know what he means by those words. An announcement alerting everyone that the exam will commence shortly rings through the building. The candidates are told to come to the testing site, so Desser turns to Ladoria to ask if they should go, but he's taken aback by how livid she is. His mentor tells him that he must pass the test, and he nervously replies that he will do what he can. If this is truly the past, he expects to see his most cherished person. Desser enters the hall looking for her. He hears a voice that sends shockwaves through his body. He turns and it's Romantica. She berates him for looking around like a child, and he gets a flashback to her death in the future. This alone confirms that he has been sent to the past. Desser is not sure how it happened. 
but he doesn't intend to allow that tragedy to repeat itself. He intends to rewrite the history of the world, bringing the episode to an end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more Legendary Tales.